Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I must admit that talking about PCIe Express 4 probably isn't the sexiest of topics, but I appreciate you clicking on the video, and hopefully by the end you'll know exactly what it is and why it's actually quite a big deal. Now recently I've been looking at upgrading my main work PC, and to be honest, one thing I kind of assumed I didn't need is a system that supports PCIe Express 4.0. I mean, after all, PCIe 3 storage is already blazing fast, and the RTX 2080 Ti I have in my build here doesn't saturate all the bandwidth it offers. But then I saw rumors of next-gen graphics cards, new cheaper PCIe 4 storage options becoming available, and then of course all the talk around the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which have been teased to come with super fast storage, and is most likely going to be based on PCIe 4. So this got me thinking, should PCIe 4 be at the heart of my new system? Well, let's take a step back, and as you probably already know, the PCIe Express interface is what your graphics card, adding cards, or M2 and NVMe storage drives use to send and receive data. And with each new revision to the spec, the data transfer speed is effectively doubled. PCIe 3 maxes out at around 16 gigabytes per second in each direction, but PCIe 4 can do a massive 32 gigabytes per second each way which is great, but arguably a little bit overkill perhaps. I mean, the PCIe 3 storage I'm using now, the NVMe SSDs, I think I'm using the Samsung 970 EVO, these sort of drives are already about four or five times faster than these slower, older SATA 3 SSDs. And right now, even the most powerful graphics cards don't take full advantage of it. Another issue is that only AMD's pricey X570 motherboards and Ryzen 3000 series CPUs currently support it, along with their even more expensive Threadripper systems. I was also looking forward to Intel's upcoming 10th gen desktop chips, but if the leaks I've seen are correct, it seems that Intel's Z490 chipset boards have dropped PCIe 4 support due to technical issues, although it's possible it could feature on some boards with extra components, but these are bound to come at a premium. And this kind of compounds a problem that there's been a lack of components that actually take advantage of PCIe 4 speeds, except for some pretty expensive SSD storage, although admittedly their transfer speeds are pretty insane. One upside though is that because motherboards have a limited number of PCIe lanes, using 8 PCIe 4 lanes instead of 16 on PCIe 3 for a graphics card frees up more lanes for extra components. But that's only really relevant if you want extra graphics cards or have a ton of PCIe based storage. So it's kind of a chicken or the egg thing because until you have the motherboards, the chipsets that support it, companies won't develop products that support it as well. So something has to come first. And when you are at the cutting edge of tech, especially when it comes to PC components, it's always gonna be at a premium and there won't be very many components to start with. But then you could look at it as kind of speculative future-proofing of your system. I mean, if you're thinking about building a new PC soon and you're obviously gonna have it for two, three, four, maybe five years before you do a big upgrade, it could be worth hanging on for a second because I've seen lots of reports of Samsung's next-gen 980 PCIe 4 SSD storage coming very soon in their Pro, Evo, and affordable Cuvo range, which actually could be what they use in the upcoming PS5 and Xbox Series X, Well, I'll talk more about that in a second. So right now, everything is very expensive, but hopefully in about a year's time, maybe things will be more mainstream and actually affordable. But let's get back to the question of whether you'd even notice a difference. Because while the boost over PCIe 3 drives is pretty significant on paper, I just don't think this will translate to noticeable differences in system responsiveness for the time being. Although it may become more obvious over time as programs grow in size and complexity. Then there's next-gen graphics cards to consider. The big Navi cards expected from AMD, as well as Nvidia's 3000 series, which will probably come out around the summer. Now, of course, we don't know what kind of performance we can expect from these next-gen graphics cards, but it is possible the extra bandwidth from a PCIe 4 motherboard may actually help you get the best performance out of it. And if not this year, then it's possible GPUs in 2021 will take advantage. But I think the most exciting use case for this new standard is how it's going to transform the next generation of consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. In an interview last year with Mark Cerny, the chief architect of the PS5, he showed how super fast storage, most likely using PCIe 4, could impact how games are designed. He showed off a demo of the PS4 game Spider-Man running on new hardware and showed how he could fast travel around the game city in 0.8 seconds rather than 15 seconds on a PS4 with a slow hard drive. So if you're moving fast through a large city or complex terrain, then it should remove any ugly texture pop-in. Realistically though, I think for multi-platform games, most developers will still be designing them for older SATA 3, and of course even older hard drive-based systems. So it may take a couple of years before we start to see the full benefit of PCIe 4 storage. 
And as I say, if the latest reports are true, we could see Samsung's 1TB 980QVO NVMe storage in the upcoming consoles. And so if they start mass producing them, it should make it cheaper for everyone. Getting back to PCs just for a second, and to complicate things even more, the spec for PCIe 5 has actually already been finalized, but don't worry about this at all for the minute. It's not something you'll consider for probably two or three or even four years from now. It's a bit like 5G, you know, it's just coming out, it's barely available, but of course people have started talking about 6G. There's always something else around the corner. So that's a lot to take in, but let me answer some questions directly. Number one, should you build a new PC now with PCIe 4? Well. Honestly, probably not. Unless you have money to burn or you just want a really future-proof system, I would wait if you're gonna spec a new PC because there's just not many options. There's not much use case for it right now. And it's only gonna get cheaper as time goes on, especially if the next gen consoles do use PCIe 4 storage, which isn't confirmed, but it is very likely. By then, you know, the beginning of 2021, there'll be loads more options, they'll be much more affordable, and then it'll probably be worth investing in PCIe 4. And I think right now, the only way you'd really see any difference if you had a full PCIe 4 setup is if you're transferring large files. But then of course, both devices need to be PCIe 4 or else you're gonna get a bottleneck. But I am really excited to see how it's gonna transform the next gen consoles, especially when developers can optimize their games to take advantage of it. As for laptops, AMD's new 4000 series chips, which are due out in the next couple of months, won't support PCIe 4, which does make sense at this stage due to the extra cost and power requirements. Although we could see support for it with Intel's Tiger Lake processors due towards the end of this year, but I'm not holding my breath. But what do you reckon? Do you think PCI 4 is a central part of your next system build or is it worth waiting for a while? And also while we're talking about next gen consoles, we can't not have a poll about PS5 versus Xbox Series X. Let me know which one you're more excited for in the poll at the top right. Thank you so much for watching guys. And if you want to see more from me, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.